fire range of 50 apart there. I thought I've always visions of something with a, with a, a six cylinder engine in it, but I didn't think it was going to be a fire engine. <laughs> but just the way it worked out, um, and I love it. I think Dad would like it if he's, if he's around to see it. father was, I guess, kidding us each other. Like, he actually threw away the walk, because he goes, you mind that. He um, came to the last shed, and your man just pulled back the door, and the back of her was just sitting inside the door. And he says, uh, Jesus, the father says, there's the very first one I drove. Cleaned it up enough that we were ready to get that into it. So he got up into it, and he sat in there, and he was talking to Martin Thompson, and there was a couple of friends of ours, our patent party flood as well. They were all sitting inside. I was around taking photographs outside. It meant nothing to me. Didn't recognise it at all until I got to the side door and stepped up into it. And then the hair stood on the back of my neck. The memories just came back like from when I was maybe five, six years of age. Looking around at all the old faces, the smells, the, where the equipment was in it. It just, it was really spooky like. Uh, Dad passed away. Martin put up a lovely piece on the Earth, Earth Fire Service Trust Facebook page about Dad and his visits to Atai and the old fire engine and stuff. And two weeks later, he rang me up and said he's still interested in that fire engine. And I had it back here, and then two weeks later, he and Martin organised transport and everything. I had nothing to do and just opened the gate. It's a mahogany frame and coach built in three sections, three sets of frame bolted together. Um, and I was just stood up onto the chassis then and let the roof part just dropped down and it all kind of tied together. It's all aluminium, aluminium down the side, steel roof, steel bulkhead and steel on the front. The only rust issues I had was on the front, underneath the headlights and the bumper. Um, they're obviously being replaced, made new bumpers and new front panels for it. The roof has been fine. There's lots of little pit marks of rust from going to chimney fires where bits of soot come up and burnt the paint on it. So it was, well, it was fine. There was no, there was no rust as such, no, no holes. In it. The fire engine was here for a, for a couple of months, and uh, there was nothing worrying me about it. Like there was bits of rust and some corrosion and uh, some holes in the aluminium. It didn't really bother me an awful lot. My biggest worry was locker doors. But they were so bad all through, I didn't know where I was going to start repairing, where you'd finish. You'd have a new section, old section, new section. So they're brand new locker doors. And any screws or nails I put back into this it was either stainless steel or, or copper. Because um, every rust, every nail and every screw and I had, had rusted out of it. I couldn't figure out why they build fire engines with steel stuff until I realised that they only build these fire engines for maybe 10 years service and then they're scrapped. There's no long longevity in them. The wheel arches were steel. Um, obviously from back in Hinton, the narrow laneways are going down narrow roads or ditches or reverse into the old fire station. They were in bits. They were beyond doing anything. So I got those remade. They're handmade down in Wexford by um, Brendan Tyrrell. All the skin on the back of that, that stuck with aluminium, that was off it. All the timber work had been repaired and replaced in here. There's joists, timber joists, mahogany joists in here. Three of them running there, there and there. There's also, it's the same here, it's just lumps of timber sitting off the off, um, channel iron. Um, crazy when you think of it underneath, you see all the woodwork that's underneath it. heavy lump of a wooden ladder, that's what she came out with originally. I'm not saying that's her original ladder because it's not. Um, I just cleaned it down, restored it. Just, it's shown its signs of age, but I think it looks apart. It's the right colouring. 
days. She carried four suction hoses up on top. Two I've restored, two more I have almost finished, which is not up on top yet. She's actually fitted for six hoses, but she only ever carried four. There's a 200 gallon water tank inside here, a 600 gallon a minute pump. So when she arrived at the fire, two lads went in with this hose, the first aid hose, to dampen down things while the rest of the crew went to find water quick. The spare wheel carrier, that was rotten. The whole bottom was gone over, so that's new. Not many fire engines carry spare wheels, but the country ones did. Because when they were gone, they were gone. They needed a spare wheel. The number plates, again, they're very similar to the original ones on it, they're a new plate. Again, I had to get those in the UK. Um, that's a Wickler Reg FNI, 1969. The guys in the UK who were familiar with these things said it looks better than it ever left the factory, so that's high praise. To help fund the travel costs of our team, we've put together a collection of downloadable transport prints, available to buy now. Please support our valuable work in preserving Irish transport heritage.